Hello, hello. Welcome to the show. So today I want to talk about something that's like a little chewy. It's about personal growth and business growth and how they're actually really interrelated. But personal growth equals business growth. When we grow, our business grows. And the reason is that it's always mindset before mechanics, right? I can tell you exactly the steps to take, and I do in this podcast for, what, 207 episodes now, but very few people who listen to this are going to actually take the action or take the action continuously for a long enough time to actually see the results. And the reason is that a lot of the things that we talk about are about putting yourself out there and investing in yourself and um, betting on yourself and issues of worthiness and scarcity and people pleasing and, you know, so many other things come up to the surface. And so these are stories that we're telling ourselves and we un- we believe them to be true. And so they keep us from taking the action that will actually get us the result that we want. And so the more we overcome that, the more that we expand our mindset, the more we grow in in ourselves, in the more personal growth that we have, the stronger that we allow our minds to become, the more expansive we allow our minds to become, we will see that in business because we're willing to take different actions. So so some of the like closed mindset objections that I hear to um, advice that I give around people wanting to grow their business with systems and team are things like, it's easier to do it myself or it's too expensive to hire people or I'm going to have to check my team's work or uh, my clients want me or my clients won't like this new format, you know, this retainer model or whatever or that they're scared to invest because they've been burned before or even things like it doesn't feel aligned, like the work that even if the result of the action there, it doesn't feel aligned or it's hard so it must be wrong or like they just need to work harder and they'll get to the goal. Now, like that's all fine except that, like I mentioned, these are stories that we're telling ourselves and your business will not grow if you do not grow. I guarantee that you will see a direct correlation so let's talk about these myths, right? These things that these objections that come up because what we have experienced influences our world view. And just because we haven't personally experienced something or seen someone experience something, it doesn't mean it's not true or that it is true. So And just because someone had a particular experience or we even had a particular experience, it doesn't mean we're going to have that same experience next time. So I want you to always know that what you want is possible and there is a pathway to get there and you can figure it out. You are a powerhouse woman. If you are listening to this show then you have a desire to build a business and life for yourself that is unlike the norm. It means you're already thinking big and it means that you can get there. You have what it takes already. So all those beliefs that I talked about, I have felt those to be true in some capacity over some time and I have also disproved them to myself and with my clients again and again and again. So that's what I want to talk about today, specifically talk into some of those things in case you are feeling them as well, because I know that they're really common and we're going to go fast. We're not going to really linger here because let's just get this crap out of the way and move on, right? Like let's start 
proving to ourselves that these things aren't true. These limitations that we put on ourselves are exactly that. They're limitations that we put on ourselves. So the first one is that it's easier to do it myself. And that is not true. There are people out there who can do it faster and better than you can. It is a really big, wide planet out there. And there are lots of incredible people. And I want you to know that every time that we say yes to something or we put something on our calendars, then every time you do that, you are saying no to something else. So every time you put something on your calendar, even if it's a 10 minute thing that it's like this thing that this client wanted you to do and you can do it and it's just going to be easy, that means you are saying no to marketing in that moment. You are saying no to making a sale in that moment. You are saying no to supporting your team or building your team in that moment. You are saying no to creating something for your business. You are saying no to your partner. You are saying no to your child. You are saying no to every single other thing than that thing that you put on your calendar. So when you frame it like that, should it be on your calendar? I want you to ask yourself that. When you say it's easy to do it myself, well, are you willing to say yes to that thing and say no to every other thing? Because that's effectively what you're doing. And if the answer is yes, that's fine. But make sure that you realize how valuable your time is. We don't get it back. We can't buy more of it. It is like the amount of time on the table is decreasing every second. So with that reference, is it easier to do it yourself? All right, the next is that building a team is too expensive or it's too expensive to hire someone or it's too expensive, like just it's too expensive, right? Too expensive to hire or, or buy software. And again, come back to the time factor. Your time is always worth more than your money. You can never get time back. You can never make more of it. And when you execute things like using software, like implementing software and hiring people, that frees you up to make more money. So do your research and then invest wisely. Investment is supposed to be that. It's not a cost. It's an investment. So when you invest in people, they are there to make you more money and give you more time. That is their role. That is the whole point. And it is the same with software. It should get you more money and it should get you more time. Oh, a leaf just fell off my plant. It scared me. All right. The next one is that they're going, that you're going to have to check people's work, that it's going to take you more time if you hire a team. Now, that will be true if you hire incorrectly or you don't have a staff onboarding process that is robust. And we teach this inside the Agency Academy. We teach a training, mentoring, coaching framework. And I'm going to do a um, I'm going to do a whole episode on that. So stay tuned for that. But it involves adding more responsibility as you have more trust. And there is actually a process that you can take to do that. So have a look for the training, mentoring, coaching framework um, podcast that will be coming out shortly. <laughs> Um, so the, the moral of the story is if you have to check people's work long term, then you're doing it wrong. Because if we have checklists and videos and we have this training mentoring coaching framework, you won't have to check people's work. All right. Clients want you or clients won't like it. So no matter whether you're trying to sell clients to a different offer, like a retainer model or you're trying to um, you're trying to sell them on a member of your team or a different business structure, that's exactly what you're doing is you're selling to them. It's you've already sold to them once, so you can do it again. You know what they want. So you get to package and frame what you're offering within the guidelines of what they want. And that doesn't mean we're lying, right? It just or we're not being deceptive of 
in any way, shape or form. I'm not telling you that. But how we frame something is everything. Like those of us who are parents are going to know how when we want our kids to eat a really healthy dinner, how are we going to frame it, right? Are we going to say it's it's full of vegetables or are we going to say it's like, you know, a shepherd's pie? Like how, how are we going to frame that same thing in line with what they actually want? So you get to prove to them that other people are just as good as you're even better. And when you can communicate something and you are confident about it, that's what sales is. It's the transfer of confidence. So if you are confident that what you have created or what you have curated is the best outcome for your client, then you need to communicate that and transfer that confidence to them. And ultimately, it is your business and you make the rules. If you are running your business to please your clients, now don't hear me that we don't want our clients to be happy because, of course, that's the whole point of being a service provider is that we are providing a service. But if we are structuring and making sacrifices in our business and life based on what our clients want and we're sacrificing our own desires in the process, that is not okay. Because you are sacrificing your well-being, your happiness, the well-being of your family to say yes to someone who ultimately is does not have your best interests at heart, right? It, this is a business relationship. It needs to be mutually beneficial. It gets to be mutually beneficial. It gets to be amazing for both parties. And if it is not, then maybe it's not a good fit or maybe something needs to change. All right, I'll leave it there. So the next thing I wanted to talk about was the lack of investment. Now, everything in business that needs doing is going to require an investment of time or energy or money, right? And we have to see it as that as exactly that, as an investment. We should be getting back more than we put in. Or what is the point? What is the point of having a business if we put in more money than we get out? And I'm not saying that there's not times to invest in your business where that is the case, of course, but that is not a long-term strategy, right? That is an investment decision where you're putting in more than you're getting out. Lots of us start like that. Lots of us have periods like that when we are buying new software or we're investing in ads or we're hiring someone, right? You're going to see a bigger outlay initially. But that's the whole point. Initially, it should be an investment. We should get more time back from our business than we put in. We should get more energy back from our business than we put in and we should get more money back from our business than we put in. But we have to put in. And I think that's where a lot of people don't experience the reward because they're not willing to put in. When we want the 1%, result we have to be willing to do what 99 percent of people are not willing to do and that involves putting your money in to your business into invest in your growth like that's how we go faster right that's how we go faster is we spend money to get time and i get at the start of your business you're going to be putting in a heap more time than you do money most likely not for everyone but most likely and then you'll get to a point where you have more money than time and that's where you invest in people. Ideally, you're investing in software, you're investing in team, you're investing in coaches. Because when you are following someone who is where you want to be, you are going to get there faster, you are going to get there cheaper, actually, because you're not going to waste all of this money on other things. And you're going to get there faster. Therefore, you're saving money because you don't have the opportunity cost that you wasted. So, for example, if you want to be earning hundred thousand dollars a year and at the moment you're earning 20 then maybe i should have given you an example that i knew so for, all right say you're at 5k months income and you want to be 10k months that means every month that you don't get to 10k months you're losing 5k a month if you can get to 10k months in two months time then 
amazing. Now you're earning 5K more per month than you were before. And if you paid to get there, incredible, you've just made an incredible investment. And so that's how we need to think of time and money and energy in our business is as an investment, not just giving, 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 and not not giving because we've got this scarcity mindset. Bet on you. There is no one else on the planet that is better to bet on than you because you get to do that for yourself. You you know you're going to show up for yourself. Does that mean you get it right every time? No. Are you going to fall on your face? Probably sometimes. We, we all do. But we learn and we get back up and we go again. And you can bet on yourself to get up again and up again and up again. And that is how we develop the personal growth that builds the business. All right. Let's talk about that it doesn't feel aligned or it's hard, so it must be wrong kind of thinking. You are not always going to feel like it. Like there is that Mel Robbins, I think it was TED Talk, who said like we need to parent ourselves. And it's so, it's so true. And there's another saying that I love, which is like, um, easy oh, I can't even remember now easy decisions hard life hard decisions easy life which basically means you know if we make the easy decisions now like we're sleeping in and we're eating junk food and we're not working out and life's easy now then we're going to experience the problems later on that we're unhealthy and overweight and sick and tired whereas if we make the harder decisions now to prepare meals and move our bodies and get the right amount of sleep when we want to stay up and, you know, having discipline now, then we're going to be healthier. We're going to have more energy later on. And so the same is true in all areas of life. So you're not always going to feel like it. We're not always going to feel like working out. We're not always going to feel like showing up and doing the content. We're not always going to feel like, you know, showing up for our business. It's it's not always going to feel easy either we're going to make mistakes we're going to um you're going to fail sometimes like you're going to try and launch something and it won't be successful and or you're going to pitch for a client and it won't work or you'll try and up your rates or move to a retainer and they'll decline the offer that kind of stuff is going to happen but it's not going to happen every time you get to learn from your results and just because it feels sticky doesn't mean it's not meant to be right and that doesn't mean that everything for you'd feel hard and sticky there are periods where things sometimes everything feels really hard and sticky it's like you're you, one of my friends it's like you're walking through custard right and everything in business and life is like that it's not always flow. It's not always rainbows and butterflies. It's not always sunshine. It's not always easy. But it's not always hard. It's not always difficult. It's not always painful. And so when you're really clear on what you want, then you can craft the way to get there. And say you craft the way to get there and you have a 12-week plan and then two weeks in you're not getting the results from your Instagram engagement that you wanted to get that doesn't mean you give up just because it's not you're not feeling motivated anymore you're not you think it's not working you haven't given it long enough like it's not always going to feel good it's not always going to work immediately we need to give things the amount of time that we said that we were going to give them in order to, like, we need to water the garden long enough to see the fruit. And I see a lot of people quitting too early because it doesn't feel aligned or it's hard, so it must be wrong. And that is such the wrong thinking because I'm not saying to put things on your calendar or to put things in your strategy that feel out of, like, misaligned. Don't launch a low value ebook if it doesn't feel aligned like don't decide to do that don't decide to go live every week if that doesn't feel aligned to do that but when you make a decision that is a strategic decision in line with a goal don't quit early because it feels hard like good things take time actually and business gets to be simple but it is 
like a Rubik's cube, but there's a formula for a Rubik's cube, right? I don't know if you know this. My kids are obsessed with Rubik's cubes. I've been for a few months, probably all this year, actually. And there's a formula, like you make the white cross and then you make the white layer and then you make the bottom, like the white side and then you make the bottom layer and then you make the middle, like there's a formula. And if you want the white square to go from the bottom left to the top right, there's a formula, you know, you turn the bottom one way and then you turn the other way two ways. Like there's there's a formula for a Rubik's Cube. It's not, like it's not something that can't be solved. And business is the same. There's formulas. There's standard formulas that we follow. Do they look a little bit different for everyone? Yeah, because we're dealing with people. But there's formulas. And so you can work it out. So, But once you decide on a plan, finish the plan, work the plan. And on that is the last one I want to talk about, which is I just need to work harder. Now, those of us who have been around the traps for a little while and have reached a certain level in business know that there comes a time where you can't just work harder. Like hustle will get you, will get you some results. Hustle will get you some results. And then after that, to a point, and then you'll be stuck. You can't outwork yourself or you, you can't work harder when you don't have any more time. There are limited hours. You need to move to leverage. So what are you doing so that it's not just one plus one equals two, but one plus one equals 10. And that comes back to the core framework of strategy, systems, and support. That is how you create leverage. Everything that we talk about on this show is about creating leverage. Even this episode, when we're talking about personal growth equals business growth, this is how we get leverage. Because when we have personal growth, we increase our capacity to deal with difficult problems we increase our emotional capacity to um to be able to like output to clients and team we increase our problem solving abilities we increase our propensity like our ability to handle stress and so you can't when you're say you're going to the gym you're not going to be able to walk into the gym having never walked in there before and pick up the heaviest barbell. You're not going to be able to do that because you haven't built the muscle. And it's the same with business. We can't hold hundreds of clients and dozens of team members and all of the the money that comes with that and all of the problems that come with that and all of the you know, the needs that come with that, we can't hold that without building up to it. So how do we build up to it? We we work on our mindset. We start smashing these beliefs. We start listening to the stories that are coming up. And that's a big part of the work that we do in the Agency Academy and the work that I do one-on-one with clients is we'll come up with a 12-week plan to get them to where they want to be or a step of the way to where they want to be. And that will have certain tasks on it. And some of those tasks will feel really crunchy, will feel like make them not want to do it. They'll for week on week on week not do the task. For example, like pitching podcasts potentially. And then we get down to why why don't you want to do that? Why aren't you prioritizing that? And it's a mindset thing. There'll be a story around it somewhere. So look at what you're avoiding. Look at what your, you know, stays on the to-do list and doesn't get done. Look at objectively where you want to take the business, the steps that you'd have to take and the, and what you're telling yourself in terms of time frame there. Are you telling yourself that you can't possibly do that for 10 years? Are you telling yourself you just need to get X qualification before you can do it, that you need X amount of new clients before you can hire someone, that you, you know, what are what are you shying away from and what are the stories that you're telling yourself around that? Because I promise you when we address those things, when we work on our personal growth, our business grows because we take different actions. 
So thank you for tuning in today. This is a hard one to kind of get real around um, for ourselves. Often we need that extra, like we need someone who can see our own blind spots. We can't see our blind spots. That's the whole reason they're called blind spots. And so often we need someone else to do that for us. So if you need support around that, if you're looking for a coach or a mentor or a container to help you implement systems and team and scale your business so that you have more money and you have more freedom, the type of money and freedom that you started your business for, then reach out to me. I would love to support you in creating a plan to get there and then you can choose whether you either would like to walk alongside myself and my team to get there or you would like to implement that by yourself. But when you have a plan that is strategic, that makes sense logically, then you can really identify if there's anything that's coming up that is keeping you stuck from a mindset perspective if you are shying away from any of that. So if you'd like support, please reach out. There'll be links below. You can come onto the website, chat with me on Instagram, all the places, all the things. Um, Look forward to hearing your feedback on this one and we'll talk to you soon.